The book we have for today is Almost Gone, The World's Rarest Animals by Steve Jenkins. And this says, illustrator of the Caldecott Honor Book, what do you do with a tail like this? Almost Gone, The World's Rarest Animals. And right away on this title page, we have an animal. Monkey Eating Eagle, the Philippines. Fewer than 300 left. This fierce hunter is the national bird of the Philippines. The monkey-eating eagle is a large, standing three feet tall with a six and a half foot wingspan and a long, sharp beak. It lives in tropical rainforests and eats monkeys, squirrels, and other mammals. Like many other endangered animals of the rainforest, it is threatened by the destruction of its habitat. These birds are killed by farmers who mistakenly believe that they feed on their livestock. Crested Shelduck, China, fewer than 100 left. The Crested Shelduck was once found throughout much of East Asia. It has been hunted for food and for its beautiful feathers, until it has become one of the most endangered birds in the world. And then over here you see there's an asterisk or a star, and then we follow that star down to the bottom to see what information goes together. So when talking about fewer than 100 left, we go down here and it's going to describe that to us in a little more detail. About the number of animals left. Animals in the wild are hard to count accurately. The numbers given for each animal in this book are the best guesses of the scientists who study them. These numbers don't include animals living in zoos, just those left in their natural habitats. As people become concerned and take action, many of these numbers will increase. Others, however, will go down, since it's too late to help all of these animals recover. Now, when I read things like that, I like to go back to this page over here, and it tells us the detailed information about the book, and I'm looking for the information to see when it was published, copyright 2006. So the numbers that are given in this book are pretty old already, they're from 2006. Introduction. There is a bird perched outside your window. Window. A small bird with a black head, a white throat, and a gray body. It is a chickadee. Suppose this bird and all the other chickadees in the world died out, became extinct. Would it matter? Well, you'd never again see a chickadee sitting outside your window, or flying, or feeding its young, or building a nest. You'd never again hear a chickadee chirping, and that would be sad. But there is much more to it than that. Chickadees eat insects. Without chickadees, there would be more insects. Some of these insects would attack, attack the plants in your garden. Others, such as mosquitoes, carry diseases that might make you sick. Chickadees also eat fruit and berries. Their droppings spread and fertilize the seeds. Hawks eat chickadees. Without chickadees, the hawks might not have enough to eat and would starve or go someplace else. Hawks also eat rats and mice. Without hawks, there would be more rats and mice. Each chickadee carries thousands, even millions of tiny mites, lice, and bacteria on its feathers and inside its body. Many of these creatures can live nowhere else. Without chickadees, they would die. Every living thing is connected to many other living things, often in ways we don't understand or even suspect. And once an animal or plant is gone, it can never come back. All the living things that interact with it will never be the same. Some of them won't be able to survive themselves. Chickadees, as it turns out, are not in great danger, but many other animals are. All over the world, people are building roads and cities, turning open land into farms and ranches, and polluting the air and water. This has put millions of animals at risk. Some are critically endangered, and may soon be extinct. Some may be saved if we act quickly to help them. For others, 
it is already too late. Here are a few of these animals, animals that are almost gone. Now, this part that I just read to you is the introduction, and it helps us understand the main topic for this book, which is that there are some animals that are almost gone or extinct. There are a lot of animals in this book, and it's a very long book, so I'm going to just choose a few to read to you, and then you're going to do the Kahoot quiz to answer the questions on these. And when you return back to school, you can take a look at some of these other animals if you're interested. So let's start with the Grand Cayman Blue Iguana. Grand Cayman Island, the Caribbean. Fewer than 25 left. This iguana is found on just one island in the Caribbean. The blue iguana is 3 to 4 feet in length, weighs 15 to 20 pounds, and can live to be 50 years old. Its body turns bright turquoise during mating season. Blue iguanas eat fruit, flowers, and leaves. They have been hunted by people for food, run over by cars, and have their nests destroyed by wild dogs. Here's a northern hairy-nosed wombat. On this page is the California condor. On this page is an animal called an addix from the Sahara Desert in Africa. And this one looks super cool. There's his nose all the way over on this side of the book. And then here's the part we're going to read. The Yangtze River Dolphin, or Baiji, China, fewer than 20 left. These freshwater dolphins live in small groups along the length of the Yangtze River. They may grow to be 8 feet long and weigh up to 500 pounds. The Baiji appear in many Chinese myths and folktales. Pollution, collisions with ships' propellers, and construction on the river have greatly endangered these creatures. There were approximately 6,000 baiji in the 1950s, a few hundred in the 1980s, and fewer than two dozen in 2000. Okay, we have an Assam rabbit or hispid hare from India and Nepal, and there are fewer than 110 left. Ooh, the Miami Blue Butterfly, Florida, United States, fewer than 50 left. For 50 years, no one saw a Miami Blue Butterfly. Then, in 2000, a, colon of, a colony of these tiny bright blue butterflies was found on an island in the Florida Keys. In many places, development has destroyed this butterfly's habitat and the plants its caterpillars eat. Butterfly collectors and pesticides used to control mosquitoes also threaten the Miami blue butterfly. And this cool looking guy right here is a Javan rhinoceros from Vietnam in Indonesia and there's fewer than 60 left. And here we have a golden lion tamarin from Brazil, and there's a few hundred left. The squirrel-sized monkey lives in the tropical forest on the coast of Brazil. It is omnivorous. It will eat almost anything, including fruit, insects, frogs, lizards, and small birds. Golden lion tamarins are preyed upon by eagles, snakes, and jaguars, but are endangered mostly because people have destroyed so much of their forest home. A program to breed golden lion tamarins in captivity has increased their numbers in recent years. And here we have the eastern barred bandicoot. There he is down there. And we also have a giant stick insect. A dwarf water buffalo, or tamara from the Philippines. 
a Bactrian camel. Mongolia and China, fewer than 500 left. Waterfall frog or torrent frog, Australia, and there is an unknown number of these left. This is a Kolankin from the Indian Ocean, and there's an unknown number left. There's a space. Here is an Iriamote cat from Japan with fewer than 100 left. An Abington Island tortoise, ooh, from the Galapagos Islands, there is only one left. The tortoise, nicknamed Lonesome George, is the rarest animal in the world. He is probably the last living member of his species. Abington Galapagos tortoises are big enough to ride on. The males can be four feet long and weigh 500 pounds. The tortoises were overhunted in the 1800s by sailors who caught them by the thousands and took them on board their ships for food. And here we have a northern right whale in the Atlantic Ocean. And there are fewer than 350 left. Now, on this page, you see, we've switched to a new category. This yellow box is giving us information, and this heading here tells us, gone forever. These animals are extinct. There is little or no chance that they will be seen again, because the web of connections among living things is so complex, we don't understand all the consequences of a species becoming extinct. We do know that something unique has been lost and can never be replaced. So we have a moa from New Zealand, and we have this cool looking guy, the stellar sea cow from the Bering Strait between Alaska and Russia. It was extinct in 1768. The sea cow was huge, 25 feet long and 8,000 pounds. It swam in the cold waters of the northern Pacific. Trappers collecting seal furs hunted the stellar sea cow for food. The last of the stellar sea cows died just 27 years after the first being described by the naturalist George Steller. So his name was George Steller. He's the one who found them, so that's why their name is Stellar Sea Cow. Tasmanian wolf, or a thylacine from Tasmania, Australia, last seen in 1936. The Tasmanian wolf, or thylacine, was not really a wolf. It was a marsupial and carried its young in a pouch, like a kangaroo. It was named after the island where it was last seen in the wild. It was hunted to extinction by ranchers trying to protect their sheep. For years after the last known Tasmanian wolf died, there are reports of a few animals still living in the wild but no one has ever found one. A Guam flying fox, Guam, the Mariana Islands, last seen in 1974. And you notice how the heading, the first part is the animal's name, then there's the location where it was found, and it's telling it us when it was last seen. Now this last section of the book is coming back. Not all endangered animals necessarily become extinct. Some animals that were almost gone have been able to recover, or at least begin increasing in number. People have acted to protect their habitats, reduce the threat of hunting or collecting, and breed animals in captivity to be released back into the wild. It's hard work, but for these animals and all living things on Earth, it has paid off. So we have a Garayal or Indian crocodile from northern India. And this right here is a whooping crane from North America. It's coming back in North America. The whooping crane is the largest North American bird. It stands nearly five feet tall with wings that can measure eight feet from tip to tip. Whooping cranes are migratory birds. They travel each fall from their nesting grounds in central Canada to their wintering grounds on the Gulf Coast of the United States, and then back to Canada each spring. This is a long, dangerous journey. By the 1940s, there were only 22 whooping cranes left in the world. Breeding and protection programs have increased the number to more than 300 today. 
And here is an Alpine Ibex in Europe. And the last two pages of the book are a map that shows the world. And then it shows us a list of the animals that are almost gone with some numbers about where we can locate them on the map. Like number six, the California condor is almost gone. And then if you look over here, the number six, this is where California is on the map. And then we have gone forever and we have coming back. And that is the end of Almost Gone, the world's rarest animals. And again, I skipped over lots of animals and I'll have this in the classroom for you to take a look at on Monday when you return to school. Good luck on the Kahoot quiz.